Hey guys, Marco here, back once again from MyColorScreen.com, bringing you the latest and greatest Android home screen tutorials. Now in the last episode of Android Theming 101, I described a little bit more about launches and how they work and what the pros and cons are for each of them. If you haven't seen it, check out the link over here. Now I did say in that previous episode I'd be covering UCCW, that scene that you've just learnt about these launches, why not learn a bit about how to customize those settings and tweak them for optimal customization ability. Yeah, I just made that word up. This week I'll be featuring Apex Launcher as it's one of the most popular on MyColorScreen.com and it's also probably one of the easiest to use. Let us begin. Okay, starting from the very, very beginning, you wanna go into your Play Store and you wanna download Apex Launcher. Once you have it, you'll see a little icon appear here, which is your launcher button. So you'll tap it there and it'll open up launcher looking pretty cool like that. As you can see, it comes with a little dock here that you can slide around, add in any icons you want, as well as quite a few screens that are very, very smooth to slide around with. So let us begin with just going into our menu and tapping Apex settings. These are just a few settings that I'd like to change before I get started with customizing any home screen. First thing we really, really want to change is our portrait grid. It comes with a 4x4, which is quite stock looking and you can't really, or having more rows and columns allows for better usage of widgets. They can be resized easier and placed into more locations. So a 9x7 is used quite often, so we'll go OK. And as you can see, we can just resize it the clock a lot easier like that next thing that gets changed quite a lot is our managed screens as you can see our stock comes with five which is way too many and the more screens you have means more widgets more icons which means more battery getting used so having between one and three three being your maximum it's just a good number to have just so you can still have everything that you need but still save your battery so I'm gonna go with two for now next thing we would like to change is our minimum scrolling time as you can see, zero is default, but it can range from quite a number of different times. 10 being your quickest time. What that means is that if you put in a jumper, if you don't know what a jump is, I'll get to it very shortly. So we'll go 10 for now, and I'll show you what it does. As you can see, I've just placed a jumper here, I'd like to call them. So you want to get quickly back to screen one, and you tap that. Almost instantaneously jumps back to there. Let's go back into our home screen settings. Transition effect, this is pretty cool if you just want to have a tablet style card stack, but they do sometimes use up batteries, so keeping none is quite as effective. Next, we want to go into our wallpaper and wallpaper mode. Now, this is extremely important. If you're using multi-picture live wallpaper, you want to have it on multiple screens scrolling. That just allows the live wallpaper to move between each screen properly without having any effects. Single screen, if you like one screen, say for that one in the background, and you want to have all your screens look like that, this is the one to go for. Finally, in our hide element, I like to take off hide notification bar, hide shadows, and hide icon labels. This is mainly because your icon notification bar, you're going to be having, if you're going to customize your phone, you're going to be having widgets that are going to tell you your time, date, battery anyway, so you don't need to have the status bar at the top. As well as hiding shadows, if you have a nice looking background and you don't want the shadows to get in the way. And icon labels, that just means that if you already know what your icons do, such as Gmail or your phone, you don't have to have them labeled. So that is our home screen settings done. Next, we move on to our dock settings, where almost everyone takes off their dock. So we'll enable hide dock, and if I show you now, our dock has disappeared at the bottom. That just allows you that you can put your the icons that were in your dock anyway. You can put them on the side, like that. It doesn't have to be always at the bottom there. Like everyone that has just gotten their phone, they're gonna have that dock. So you wanna spice it up a bit more. Now we come to our behavior settings. Now this is very important if you wanna hide your status bar or even your dock. The first thing you wanna do is change your home screen, your home key action to show app draw. Why I say this is because if you have a very minimal screen and you don't have an app draw, what do you do? Well, push your menu button, brings up your app drawer. So it's quite a handy thing to have. I always use it because if you're deleting stuff, you can always have an app drawer available. Also what it comes in handy is our gestures. Now I think this is only available in the pro version, but they are very useful to have. One thing that I use most often is our swipe down, I change to show notifications, and desktop double tap, toggle status bar. These are quite handy to use. So if you just wanna, say if you have this, you have a very minimal screen and you don't know what your battery is, just double tapping the your background brings up a little bar there. You could see our oh, battery's doing quite fine. And if you just want to quickly see your notifications, swiping down brings up your notifications. Great job with that. Finally, our advanced settings. This I think is also only with the Pro version, but they do come in really handy. Our widget settings, we can select resize any widget as well as overlapping widgets. This is really good if, say for example, I have two widgets right here, got my minimalist text as well as my clock, and I want to 
just do something like that overlap them like that just so you can add a bit more depth to your widgets as well as your home screen so that's our apex settings complete what's good about apex is that you can say hold down on a icon and you can go edit and then you can change the name as well as the picture if you want to have a folder looking like that with all your icons you can choose any picture you want such as these google service icons and you can have this pink circle thing right here so you just go okay and now it's a little box how oh, cool put it anywhere you want finally one thing that's cool about apex actions if you hold down we have this little tab here called apex actions and these you can add quite a number of things that are also good that just provide better functionality for your phone the latest the latest trend now is having these screen one and twos say if I have my screen two over there and put my screen one over here tapping them can instantly jump between two screens very very fast and that is our launcher tutorial or guide for today I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you understand a bit more about how Apex Launcher works next week I'll be going over SS Launcher but let me know what you guys think in the comments as I can always change it if you want to really see another launcher don't forget to subscribe over here as well as checking out our new playlist they're getting very big and you really want to go check them out you don't want to miss out thank you very much guys for watching and I'll see you around next time